as we wait as the color guard comes out and presents the flags, then we'll go ahead and get this thing underway for you. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here this evening. I'm Rudy Baca, your play-by-play -play announcer, sitting alongside Jake Mosman, our color guy, here to broadcast this game. You're listening to Tau Sports Live. We're live on the Internet. And, Jake, this is going to be a great matchup. Both of these clubs, superb. That's correct. Yeah, they're both quality Division I schools. Um, Denver University, one of the top academic, academic institutions in our region who always puts great soccer teams on the field. Um, UNM likewise um, 35 wins over the past two seasons in uh, regular season play pretty much unparalleled in Division One soccer so uh, it should be a great matchup. Last year the Lobos were 17-4-1 overall 8-2 and two in conference pay and you know they like you said a stellar program. Jeremy Fishbein really has put a club together, gotten some national recognition, number one in some polls last year. So we expect an excellent game here today, Jake. And on top of that, these two schools really epitomize the idea of student athletes. Uh, UNM placed 11 players on the all conference academic team last year. The only team with more than that was Denver. Wow. We had 12, we had 11. <laughs> she doesn't get any closer than that in terms of <laughs> academics, which is really important for these universities. But again, the Lobos coming out with a power packed team this year, uh, going into the second round last year in the NCAA tournament. And it should be something else here today. The Lobos in the NCAA tournament at home against Virginia. They won that one three to one. Then they lost to number 25 Connecticut in the second round, two to one in two overtimes. Jake could have gone either way. Yeah, two back-to-back -back great seasons and I don't see any drop off. The uh, Lobos um, always do a great job uh, recruiting and uh, hosting foreign players. They have five foreign countries represented on this this year's team also so just a international flavor to their game uh, often makes a difference definitely so some of those kids that we're talking about six four six four in the front uh, these guys are some pretty big guys a lot of skilled players and for us unfortunately we, we may not get to see one of the, the better the best players on the field uh, Calderon from Costa Rica uh, got a little dinged up in practice. Uh, Jeremy was telling me the other night, and uh, he probably won't play. They want to want him healthy for the season, obviously. And and for the Denver Pioneers, uh, standing six foot seven is Reed Hakari on the field. So this thing gets pretty big <laughs> down on the inside. These guys are most biggest basketball players. Uh, the, the, like I said in the women's game, the size really doesn't matter in soccer. Uh, some of the world's best players are stretch at 5'7". So. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So so we'll take it right down onto the field. They've hoisted up the time on the clock, and the, the Lobos and the Pioneers doing battle on the field right now. And just by looking at these guys down here, you can see the in intensity ready to take place here as the Lobos with already with the corner kick off the left side and everybody getting poised for it, Jake. Um, pushed up and uh, pressing the attack already. Shot. 
They're back and forth across the goal mouth. Great, great opportunity for the Lobos there off the reset. So a couple of guys with the chances at getting it in there. Hillborn's Caleb almost had it in there, and then it's going to go all the way outside to McKendry. And McKendry try to get it in there again. The Lobos really attacking hard now, and then a penalty. A little bit of a push, restart to Denver. So Denver will get it back here as they will, well, actually clear it out. They'll get it out here. And we'll try to get these numbers around Ryan Dotson. And Ryan continues with it. And then the Lobos steal it away and they get it into Michael Kafari. And they'll back it up all the way outside and try to regroup here as they play with it on the outside. Nick Mealy with it right now, and he's going to bounce it on over uh, to Kyle Venter, and Venter way all the way down the field, and it will go out of bounds, and that will go back over to the Pioneers. And Lobo's kind of looking at the shape, seeing how Denver's going to play and where they're going to apply the pressure from, trying to see where the space is um, to, to begin the attack. So again, the Pioneers on the attack right now, a three-on-three -three break as they try to go to the right side now. Get it way out there to Brian Hoyt, and Brian playing around with it, and he's going to continue to dribble it, and then he gets it and puts it all the way back in the backfield. So now again up front, Lobo's trying to make a break for it, and that will go over the head of the first Lobo, Don Ben McKendry, and he'll uh, let it go out of bounds. Ben McKendry is one of those foreign players from uh, uh, British Columbia. He uh, represents Canada on their U-20 national team. Yeah. Very, very good player. So now the Pioneers will bring it in on the right side of the field in Lobo land, so let's see what they can do with it. They bring it in bounds off the chest of one of the Pioneers, and then they get a shot way over here to the left side. Wind really prevailing to that side and impeded that ball from going all the way over, and then the Pioneers on a break down here is going to be a shot on the ball to the center and over the box, and that will go out of bounds. The, the wind is going to be... Uh a factor for both teams. They're going to have to figure out how it's affecting the flight of the ball and adjust to that, which is going to be tough because it's gusting. So it's not a constant win. It's something they're going to have to, to deal with all day. And that was Zach Bolden from the Pioneers who had that kick and goes out of bounds back in. Pioneers with the control again. This time they got a, got a bunch of guys in the front field and that it's bounced all the way back again. And it will go out of bounds, and it will go over to the Lobos. So Lobos get a break there and get the ball back here. Both teams start with pretty good energy. They look like they're up for the game. Um, they're you know, former conference foes. The University of New Mexico will be moving to Conference USA this year, so they won't be conference opponents uh, after this year. Or, um, starting this year, but uh, very familiar with each other, and um, I'm sure they don't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Maybe respect, but not like. So again, Denver against Albuquerque, that always creates uh, <laughs> a little bit of tension. <laughs> we're, we're, I think we probably have the chip on our shoulder in that matchup. It there. could be. So the Lobos with the attack right now, they control it, they'll kick it all back to their goalie, and he'll try to do something with it. That is Patrick Poblet, and he'll put it in play. Gets it up to Kyle Venner, and then he'll go to the right side to Nick Milley, and Nick will kick it all the way down. He had... Good ball, good, well weighted. He can get that. And across oh, the what a shot! Oh, perfect, my goodness! Perfect execution on the long diagonal ball. Quick cross. Oh, Oh, it was it went over the end line, called out, and goal kicked to Denver. But excellent execution, just a little heavy on the first pass. I man, that was Riley McGovern taking it in into Chris Gurule, 
And that was a nice looking play on our end. That was uh, well executed again, kind of what you like to see in practice. <laughs> <laughs> so again, the Pioneers trying to keep it on their side of the field. And then it goes out of bounds and back over to the Lobos quickly in play for the Lobos. And again, goes out of bounds on the left side. This time it'll go over to the Pioneers as Nick Thrill is trying to get it in there quickly for the Lobos and didn't pan out. So the Pioneers will get it back here and they will control it on the right side. We've seen a lot of play on the right side. Could be because of the wind, the perhaps. Wind, wind could Jake? be a factor on that end. Um, I, I don't really know why, but the women's game was played away from us as well. So. Uh, it must be us. What is it? <laughs> I, I, guess want, I don't want to feel that way, but it seems that way. So right now, again, on the right side of the field, the ball goes out of the field completely. So uh, somebody throws it in from the outside, and it'll go back over to the Denver Pioneers. Right no now. score yet. 37 minutes left in the first half. A lot of soccer to be played here, and these kids are really going after it, as Jake mentioned. Uh, the Lobos are playing with really good intensity, good pressure on defense, uh, forcing the action. They're not sitting back and waiting for a mistake. They're, they came out to press the action and force the play, it appears to me. And for the Denver Pioneers, Ray Dotson with a big brace on his right arm, so that could impede his play a little bit today. That will go off the goalie and the Pioneers will get a corner kick out of this thing, Jake, and this could be dangerous. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate. It was just a simple back pass. I think the wind might have affected the, the flight of the ball. The goalkeeper couldn't read it. He couldn't, when it's a pass off the feet uh, from the defense, he can't use his hands. So he was uh, at a disadvantage there with the bad bounce and uh, turned into the first um, real opportunity for Denver. So and danger still isn't quite over yet either. They've still got the ball in their end. And then they clear it out. It goes all the way back to the goalie, and the goalie will put it back in play. The goalie for the Denver Pioneers playing well, and here comes they still have control of the ball. They'll try to keep it on the right side. Now they come to the left side towards us. We finally get to see some up-close play the, here. You can see the communication and, and organization on the Lobos defense trying to stay compact, trying not to allow any space in the middle of the field um, and force a turnover. There the defensive uh, line does a really good job of holding the offside line and creating a turnover off the uh, offside's call. And that was Ryan Dotson, the guy we had talked about earlier with that big uh, brace on his right arm and he was off sides there and gives the turnover over to the Lobos. It takes a lot of discipline and a lot of communication to be able to uh, pull off that, that um, type of play on defense. Uh, it gets a little nerve wracking there with that much space behind you kind of if you get nervous and you start backing up it can really cost you so you've got to be disciplined and uh, communicate. And here comes the Another Pioneers well, with well a break. Ball. And then it gets kicked out of bounds by the Lobos as it was, there was a, an excellent cross. Crossing is um, sometimes a bit of a lost art in soccer. I, uh, I don't think I see as much quality crossing as I would like yeah. in, in the game anymore. Um, but we've seen two excellent ones to start the game, one by UNM and one by Denver. So you can tell these are very well coached teams, very well uh, uh, versed in the important aspects of the game. So again, the Pioneers and the Lobos doing battle here. 33 <laughs> minutes left in the first period. Still no score. Both teams still feeling each other out right now. The Lobos do have possession at this point. They'll bring it in bounce. It goes kind of deep but controlled by the Pioneers and they will back it all the way out to see if they can regroup here and try to get some offense going as they come to the left side now and Riley puts it all the way deep and chasing it down and it will go all the way to the goalie he'll pick it up and send it back